Belfast and St. Anne's Cathedral have grown up together. In this industrial city at the turn of the century, the foundations were laid for a building which would testify to spiritual as well as material strength. Even in the changing city, you can see the pattern of homes built in the shadow of factory chimney and shipyard crane in the hope that unity of purpose would lead to prosperity for all. But as that hope faltered and the old divisions reappeared, the cathedral was still a place where people could come together. It belongs to the Church of Ireland, part of the Anglican Communion, but other denominations have always found it a place of peace and reconciliation. And they look now to the completed cathedral as a symbol of that unity to which they aspire and which is their wish for the people of Northern Ireland. This was the scene last Tuesday at a service of dedication and thanksgiving for the newly completed cathedral, attended by Her Royal Highness Princess Alexandra and the Archbishop of Canterbury, Dr. Runsey. I come here simply to preach that gospel and to congratulate you on your building because I know that you not built just in stones but in Christian lives as well and your building on the only sure foundation which is Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with the Father and the Spirit we now offer thanks and praise. Amen. The choirs of the city on this Whit Sunday begin their songs of praise by singing, Come Down, O Love Divine.
Last week, John Carson completed a year as Lord Mayor of Belfast, a city whose future he passionately believes in. When I came to office as Lord Mayor of this great city, which I'm very proud of, I said that um, I didn't want to hear of two communities. I was talking to a community. I have acted and behaved that way since taking office, and uh, the people themselves, right the way to the community, have responded in that way. And uh, I have been thrilled and delighted by the response, not only from the people, but especially young people. Uh, they have been marvellous, and I think we have the cream of the young people in Belfast here. Hello, ladies. Hello. How you doing? All right? Okay. Where are we going this morning? Shopping, all right. Yeah. Good. What's your name? Pamela. Pamela? Good. <laughs> Sport brings a lot of people together. We have this rally on uh, in Northern Ireland, which is attracting big crowds. I spoke to some people at the rally, the Circuit of Ireland rally. Uh, for the very first time, they've been to Northern Ireland as far away as Canada. And I think that opens up Belfast, opens up the place, and lets them see it. We're normal people, not with horns, as some people throughout the world see us. Uh, and, uh, we live a very normal life. That the biggest majority of people want to get on with life, enjoy life, and make the best they can of it. Uh, I love the Richard Green Hill far away. It's one of my favourite hymns. Uh, it links me to the little church I attend. And in fact, I enjoy going around the small mission halls. Uh, one I attend very often is in the Shankill Road, uh, Bethshan Church. Uh, they get great gatherings of young people, and my speciality is young people. I love getting amongst them. I love to see them happy. I love to see them looking in the brighter and better side of life, and that has been happening in Belfast over the past 10 months. Tony Briggs is manager of the new leisure centre in Andersonstown, an area which has especially suffered in the disturbances of the past 11 years. The centre recently won the award for the best managed in the United Kingdom. It is like an oasis in the desert. It's, it's a change. It's a completely different environment. time they can come in and take part in any facility 
any activity that they enjoy doing in their free time from sport to passive uh, dancing, pottery, art, going to exhibitions as today's motor show for example. There's no damage, there's no graffiti and it's, it's, that is down solely to the people who use it, they look after it. It's given them somewhere to belong to and it's given them something that they haven't had in the past. It's a new awareness, it's a new type of atmosphere to, to play in really. You see so many people coming together and enjoying themselves and having a different outlook on life when they're taking part in a controlled environment and yet that, that, that is completely alien to what is going on out on the streets. It's difficult sometimes to stop people being pigeonholed as, as to being Catholic or Protestant and I think this is possibly part of our problem. When they come together in a leisure environment we don't seem to have any problems. So certainly when they come in through this door we do not pigeonhole them as being Catholic or Protestant. You're talking there about gathering people in and I think that that is really what your hymn is saying in the same way. That's right, yes. Uh, abide with me. Hopefully we're bringing the people with us, bring them together uh, and develop them as people and show them a different side to society.
William Rutherford is chief consultant to the Accident and Emergency Unit at the Royal Victoria Hospital, which has dealt with countless victims of Belfast's violence. Uh, I've uh, seen appalling suffering, uh, both to the various people who were injured themselves and also to uh, the relatives, especially the relatives of those who were killed. And uh, working in hospital, uh, one was faced with people from all angles uh, of this, uh, people in the services, civilians, people from the Catholic or the Protestant side, and uh, in all of this there was an immense load of suffering. Uh, at the time, of course, one was so involved in doing things that, uh, that you suppressed your feelings. Uh, afterwards, to be involved somehow in making peace and reconciling uh, was, was so deeply connected with everything I believe and everything that I feel is right at the center of the gospel. Uh, forgiveness and reconciliation and peace and justice and all these things. Uh, it has something to do with the cross, uh, and Christians have found that as they identified with the cross, that in some way uh, they could cope with suffering as it arrived. Isn't and that, I think, is the real message of this hymn that we are going to sing, the uh, head which once was crowned with thorns. This Lieutenant Colonel John Fayo is a Methodist and the Army's chief chaplain in Northern Ireland at the end of his tour of duty. I've been a chaplain now for 21 years and although I am a pacifist in uniform and would want, you know, to live peacefully um, with all nations and, and in all situations, I can still quite happily be identified with people who need pastoral help, um, not least when they're under the kind of pressure that they have been under in the last 11 years in Northern Ireland. Uh, 
um, it's not a war situation here. It is um, civil disturbance. Um, the soldier doesn't want to be here, but he is glad to serve his queen and country wherever um, the need is. And in Northern Ireland now, going on for the last 11 years, he accepts this role. I see the soldier very much as a serviceman, um, keeping the peace, supporting now the, the RUC, um, military aid to the civil community, roles for me which are Christian. I'm not trying to say the soldier is a Christian, it certainly isn't a pagan army fighting a religious war, but um, the soldier is a serviceman and is trying to do something for the community which is helpful and will contain a situation so that there can be a political solution. I am privileged to be able to meet a lot of nice people and to go to um, situations which are perfectly normal, where there is peaceful coexistence and where I meet clergymen doing their thing in, 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 in the normal way. And I have got to try and show the soldier this kind of um, activity in the province, that it isn't all bad news, and that um, for so many people here, they are law-abiding and, and uh, wanting to cooperate and do the right thing at the right time. Can I introduce you to some of our men, sir? Patricia McParland is a control operator at the headquarters of one of the hardest pressed fire brigades in Europe. Well, this control room is the link between the collar all over Northern Ireland and the actual appliances of the fire brigade. Fire brigade. Hello, madam, what's on fire? A building on fire. And what's your address? Down Cruise Street. What main road's that off? Wherever you phone from in Northern Ireland, you come through here on the emergency 9999. Nine nine nine. We take the address, the telephone number, and any other information we need off the caller, and then we turn out the relevant station. Call for Whitlow 1, Whitlow 2, to a building on fire, number 666, Dun Crew Street, Dun Crew Street, off Whitlow Street. Call for Whitlow 1, Whitlow 2, to a building a light, number 66, Don Crew Street, Don Crew Street, off Whitless Street. There's urgency with every call, but there's even more if you know there's someone trapped in the house, because you're always thinking to yourself, well, if that was me, 
you know, how would I be feeling trying to get out? And sometimes, you know, whoever's phoning can see them trying to get out, you know, and it's very hard sometimes not to panic because you're feeling for them as well as, you know, for yourself. What do you find yourself doing? What do you call on? When you say the only prayer, of course, to, just to ask God that they get out all right. And of course, sometimes they don't. But um, you do your best at your end. And you hope they, that the men are doing their best at their end. And then maybe God will do a bit of his as well. Dean Samuel Crooks has been the principal driving force behind the completion of the cathedral and the ceremonies to celebrate it. It is our earnest hope that this completed Belfast Cathedral, being built by all, should be used by all, that it should be the church of the people, where young and old meet together to worship God and where the gospel of Jesus Christ is proclaimed, that within these walls people may continue to meet God here and to worship him. Let us pray. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good cheer. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no man evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all men. Love and serve the Lord rejoicing in the power of his Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always.